Hello everyone, welcome back to Conrad Stevenson's Paranormal PI. We have a new patch that was released just a few hours ago, so we are going to hop back into the game and test some of these things and see how the hunts vary from what we were dealing with prior. Prior to these changes, um, replaying the ghost events was really not any fun because I, it, it felt very formulaic, it felt very scripted, um, and it just wasn't really something worth replaying. The main reason I would have seen to continue playing the game is when New Ghost came out, and I was certain that since they seemed scripted, it would be a different script. This patch seeks to eliminate the scripted feel of some of the hunts, so I'm excited for that. We'll read through this real quick, and then we will hop into a game. We'll probably just pick a random one on Evergreen Lane and see what happens. So let's just start from the top here. Blue light on the EMF meter was corrected. Revised ghost scoring system, player still only sees gold, silver, and or bronze, and implemented the player reputation score, behind the scenes for now, used to unlock locations and maybe other things. All ghosts have a base stat system. Depending on the ghost and its behaviors, these stats will vary, similar to an RPG like strength and intelligence versus warriors and wizards. Collecting evidence will excite all ghost and evidence modifiers are applied accordingly. Also, how evidence modifiers are applied vary between ghosts and their alleged personalities. Implemented new ghost behavior systems for all ghost types. After this update, this change will not take effect until a new mission is started. Revised notes menu to complement the scoring system. Also, eliminated ghost type info from notes and modified descriptions to the ghost book. This is to not clutter up the notes page, but allow the player to review the ghost book to gain an understanding of how to hunt each ghost. Revise the ghost book to give better clues about how to investigate the different types of ghost. More diversity is present between ghosts now. Change temp sensor so it turns on as soon as it's equipped. And modified the EVP system, greater likelihood of obtaining them. So let's hop back through a couple of these points real quick. Revise notes menu to complement the scoring system. Also, eliminated ghost type info from notes and modified description to the ghost book. This is to not clutter up the notes page, but allows the player to review the ghost book to gain an understanding of how to hunt each ghost. So I reckon this will be a change in the actual residual intelligence, poltergeist, and demonic entries. So maybe a little bit more info on how to accurately hunt those. Revise the ghost book to give better clues about how to investigate the different types of ghosts. More diversity is present between ghosts now. So before this change, the only real difference in obtaining evidence was the poltergeist, really. Um, all other ghosts would give you temp sensors, would give you EMF, would give you audio, and would give you a visual. Poltergeist was the only one that gave off no EMF, and the ghost would not manifest in a ghost form. It would instead throw things on the ground, and you had to take pictures of those. So we'll see how this has changed maybe with a couple of the other things. Uh, the temp sensor being turned on as soon as it's equipped is fine. It was just a push of one button, but it's one less button we have to push. Modified EVP system. Greater likelihood of obtaining them. This is probably the change I'm the most excited about. Alongside the other things, the ghost being more unique is, is great, but just being able to get the EVP would make these hunts so much more fun because you're actually getting more interaction with the ghost on a unique level because the the temperature drops are probably the same the emf is always going to kind of play out the same the only thing that's different is the audio that you would either get from evp or the passive audio and the manifestation of the ghost itself so having this one little thing the evp to go along with those passive sounds is just going to make the hunt feel that much more unique because we're not dealing with uh half of the hunt being exactly the same as every other hunt so i'm excited about that um that out of the way we're going to hop right into a game, and we're back in our office. So we are going to hop right over to our map here and take a look. Okay, so the menu and the, the UI is all the same so far, so nothing unique there. Um, I don't have any preference in trying any ghost more than any other one. We'll probably just hop into a random one and see what we get. We'll probably be able to tell which scenario we've gotten just based on the intro, but at least we won't be picking and choosing. We'll just see what happens. The homeowners reached out to me a few days ago, seeming to be rather desperate for help. This family is convinced their house is haunted. They moved into the house about a year ago, and within the first few months, the wife heard odd sounds like footsteps coming from the upstairs as she was on the main floor. Her husband told her she was hearing things until he heard them himself. They have three children. Mom, I'm 
Okay, so that's obviously the skipping child scenario, so we know what we're dealing with to a sense here. Um, before I continue on with the game, I just want to mention one or two things. Number one, I have been messing around with my settings in OBS, trying to increase the bitrate, so hopefully we don't get random frame drops here and there, and the game just looks a little more smooth because my computer plays everything really well, but I've noticed in the recording sometimes, um, especially if things start moving a little too quick, that the, the recording software wasn't really picking it up, and I didn't like that. So hopefully that's changed. This is my first recording with the new settings, so fingers crossed. Um, number two is the audio. I added some filters to the audio, so hopefully background noise is eliminated and my voice is a little bit clearer. If anyone notices any issues with the audio, please, please point them out in the comments so I know about it. Because when editing these, I go through and I pick out, you know, big parts that I know needed to be edited out, but I don't watch through the entire video sometimes. So I'm, I'm prone to miss things. So if you notice anything, please let me know. I won't take offense to it. Uh, that being out of the way, let's, let's look into our journal real quick. So types of ghosts, residual, intelligent, poltergeist, demonic. This all looks fairly the same. If we pull up the residual, spirits who act out, paranormal investigators are the impression that these were significant events in their life. Cold spots have been noted frequently while investigating these types of ghosts. Changes in EMF fields are assumed to change moments prior to manifestations. In the earlier years of ghost hunting, residual ghost photos were plentiful, but they diminished the credibility of the field due to being poor quality fakes. Recently, due to the improvements of ghost hunting technology, there have been a few residual ghost foes that have skeptics struggling to debunk. So this all looks pretty much the same. Most of the activity has been witnessed upstairs. I don't know if anything is too different here. Let's look at the how to investigate. See if anything's changed here. Um, and to be honest, things don't look like they've changed too much here. Things certainly could be different, but this is a lot to read, and I don't feel like doing that. The big changes are actually in the gameplay rather than the reading material, so let's just get in there and see how this hunt differs from the first time we did it. And I remember, it is that light switch this time. So I remember in my how-to video I had mentioned that I didn't see much of a point of using the night vision camera when your flashlight is on and it, the, the game's not that dark to begin with, but someone in the comments mentioned that the ghost has a higher chance of manifesting if all lights are off, and this includes the flashlight. So the night vision camera is so you can still see and walk around and maybe coerce the ghost into manifesting a little bit more. So that being the case, I just wanted to point that out. So we're mostly just going to look around with the temperature gauge and see what we get. Seems like the noise has become too faint to record. Okay, so we actually got some audio evidence right off the back and I wasn't expecting it my brain just kind of didn't know how to react so I was super late on pulling out the recorder but that's a pleasant change because being something I didn't expect it was a lot more eerie oh we had a little bit of a temp drop there for just a second so we may have just That was a very unusual noise. I will keep that as evidence. Okay. So we've been hearing the noises here. That's a vent temp, temp drop. That was a very unusual noise. I will keep that as evidence. Obtain two pieces of audio evidence that cannot be explained. So this is interesting. He's keeping track. So perhaps a change with the scoring system has brought it to where you don't just need a couple pieces of evidence to max out the bar. Now maybe it's a good bit higher since the frequency of getting audio evidence will be a good bit higher. I kind of want to try EVP, but if I remember correctly, Excuse me. Residual Ghost did not give off uh, EVP. I mean, maybe it'll give off something. It probably won't be intelligent, like an answer to our question, but it's worth a try. I'll try it. If I get nothing, I can always cut it out. Okay, so nothing yet there. Let's keep looking around with our thermometer, because we know 
temp drops or something we should be getting here. I'll keep that as audio evidence. Getting a lot of audio evidence. Yeah, we're up to three pieces. That's interesting. So we're not getting a lot on the thermometer at the moment. Maybe we'll start with the EMF. That's a two star. There's probably a light switch on the other side of the wall. If I had to venture a guess, let's investigate. Oh, hey. Okay. Seems like the noise has become too faint to record. You were a little slow on that one. Picking up a solid two right here that I can't really explain. Seems like the noise has become too faint to record. Hmm, I was pretty quick on that one. These lights are acting funny. I should continue investigating. I'm noticing some abnormal readings. I should spend some more time in this area. Hmm, these temp readings are unusual. There we go. I found some irregular cold spots, which makes me believe I should focus on this a bit more. Ooh, that is eerie audio evidence. I've obtained more than three pieces of audio evidence that cannot be explained. So that kind of indicates to me the fact that he's not keeping track anymore means we're probably filling that bar at the moment. So that's nice to know. Oh boy. Oh, we actually Seems missed. Seems like the noise has become too faint to record. So I saw the brief outline of the manifestation and I actually missed it. Another couple spikes here. The EMF meter should not behave this way. This is paranormal. Based on how and when I am seeing meter spikes, I am convinced there is paranormal activity here. Okay, another indication that we're probably good on that evidence piece. That plays out much the same, but it is really cool that everything is kind of mixed up now. I'll keep that as audio evidence. Show yourself. No luck. Okay. Back to the thermometer. Something is going on here. These temperature readings are definitely paranormal. There is no natural explanation for the temperature drops. This is evidence of paranormal activity. All right. So I think we have filled three of our pieces of evidence here. We're probably just looking for the photo now. Incredible. I captured oh, hello. a ghost on film. Multiple ghost photos in one night? Amazing. I've obtained photo evidence of a full body apparition. Absolutely amazing. Most of the activity has been witnessed upstairs. So I do notice down here in the notes, it doesn't say the little, the, the conclusion that your guy has come to. It's not saying this is most likely for sure a residual ghost. I don't know if that means that there's going to be a choice that we actually get to put in when we get to the van. Like we have to come to our own conclusion and put it in I, I would like that change because I think it's it, it makes it a little bit more of a challenge you don't just have the guy saying this is what kind of ghost it is and we're leaving it's realistic in the sense for this simulation type game that he would know what kind of ghost it is and he might jot it down but it, it takes just that extra little bit where you have to do some thinking out of the game So all that out of the way, we're probably going to stick around and capture just one more photo. We might try EVP again. Okay, so we're still not getting any EVP. That was a very unusual noise. I will keep that as evidence. Good for you. As I was saying, we're still not getting any EVP, but I'm still not certain based on... Oh, goodness, hello. Another piece of photographic evidence. As I was saying, I'm still not convinced that the residual ghosts give off EVP. They they might not, because they're not an intelligent ghost and they're not responding to your question. They could still throw in some lines there where 
Maybe she says something totally unrelated. I ask, is this your home? And she's just singing a song about candy corn and gumdrops or something. I'll ask in the Discord and I'll try to get a more finalized answer in that. And I will put that in the next episode. Where's she going to pop up at? I guess she's not going to pop up. I should turn the recorder back on. Oh, no, no, we're good. When I say put an update in the next episode, I do mean that, because we are going to do more episodes of this, because this does drastically change how the hunts work and makes these hunts a lot more interesting. I actually wish I hadn't played through them all so fast so I could have some new experiences with them, but I did what I did, and I'll have to live with that. So... We're going to head out here for the moment. Let's actually read how to... Nope, not how to investigate. Uh, finalize. Okay. So, still the same there. We'll head out of this house. I will give my final thoughts when we are back in the office. Okay, we've got full EMF. Okay. All right. And a gold trophy. Excellent. Okay, so that was the skipping girl, or skipping child, I can't remember which, again. And unlike the demon hunt, which was really boring when I did it again, I replayed it for the how-to video, this one was actually interesting to get back in there because it wasn't as scripted as I said earlier. Um, we weren't going in and looking for temperature, then looking for EMF, then collecting some audio, then getting a picture. It was a mix. We, we were getting audio almost right off the back. We got EMF before we got temperature, and the activity was just way up, which is way more interesting for uh, a hunt. So I'll, I'll say it with a bit of confidence. This one patch has drastically changed how you go about hunts, and I'm really excited, actually, to go back and try the other ones again and see how those ones react as well and as well as try to get more evp from our intelligent ghosts and the demonic one even so the ghost also seemed to not only manifest more but it was also manifesting next to us which i think is good for the scare value of the game because if i remember right with the first hunt it was manifesting at the end of the hall which was an eerie sight to see her come out of a room and skip down towards you but it's another thing when she just pops up next to you and is just going about her business i can imagine when we get to the intelligent ghosts the ones that would like look at us and scream if one of those pops up right next to us it's going to be prime for some scares so i'm really looking forward to getting to those hunts as well and i think that's all my thoughts on this new patch so far it's really made the game more interesting i'm really excited for when new content comes out with these mechanics as well as any other mechanics introduced when we get to that but that's it for me for this video here today guys uh, check out the forest video that's coming out alongside this if you haven't had a phasmophobia fill i do some nightmare runs with that and uh, go over the ghost abilities a little bit during an actual hunt so check out those as well like the video if you liked it if you didn't like it like i said if there's any mic issues or any issues with the uh, video quality please let me know down below i'm still working on rectifying that uh, subscribe ring the bell we hit 100 subscribers guys uh we did it we bounced up and down a little bit yesterday going from 102 down to 97 back up to 100 but i think we're firmly sitting at 101 right now so i'm really excited for that and uh, a big thank you to everyone who subscribed and continues to check out these videos and if you're new to the channel please do subscribe because we're going to replay these games and uh see how they change from here on out as well as play any of the new missions as they come out so that's it for me guys have a great rest of your day Bye bye